What if I told you that using Langchain, you can just give API docs to an LLM and ask it to write API calls and query the API for you? And what if I told you that Langchain can help you get some very accurate results to match questions in which most LLMs fail? Well, today's video is about chains, an important feature of Langchain, and we will have a core example that I'll take you through and we will see this feature in action. Now, I highly recommend that you watch the previous video on Langchain that I posted a few days back, which was about prompt templates and few short learning. And we discussed both of these features of Langchain in that video. Also on a side note, this video is part of the Gen AI and LLM project series. So check out the entire playlist for some killer projects built with LLMs. So what are chains? Chains are the core features of Langchain and that's why the name Langchain. So you can basically create chains for things that you want the program to execute. For example, making a call to an LLM which is basically starting a process and outputting the result. And this can be done with a chain. Now using chains, you can club multiple tasks together and you can create a chain of multiple tasks that can be executed sequentially. And we will see that today in our core example. And then the two things that I talked about at the beginning of this video, which is calling an API and also getting accurate results for maths problem can both be done using chains. So let's get started with our core example. I'll be leaving the link for the Colab file in the description so you can make a copy of it in your own drive and refer to it later. We start by installing OpenAI because we will be using GPT 3.5 Turbo. It's just faster and cheaper. So for testing purposes, I personally use GPT 3.5 Turbo. And then when the project is built and I have to go into production, I switch it to something like GPT 4 or above. Then we get Langchain itself and Hugging Face Hub. In the next cell, we set the OpenAI key and the Hugging Face API token. Then we create something called as a fact extraction chain, meaning you can send a long article to an LLM and ask the LLM to only extract facts from the article and ignore all the personal opinions. Now, this is highly useful if you're doing any sort of research and you need an objective view of any topic. We start off by importing prompt template, OpenAI and LLM chain from Langchain. Then we set our LLM to our model, which is GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct by OpenAI. Set the temperature to zero and max output tokens to 256. And then we give it an article, print out the length of the article, then create a prompt template to guide the LLM to perform a specific type of task. And we ask it to extract the key facts out of the provided text and ignore all the opinions. And in the next cell, we create our LLM chain that's gonna help us call the LLM. And we pass our LLM that we had set earlier to this chain along with the prompt and we run this fact extraction chain and then we print the output which now lies in the variable called facts. And now you see the output which is nicely formatted and you get clear facts that have been extracted from the article that we gave it. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is something called as a transformation chain where we give something to the LLM and ask it to transform it. Let's see how that works. We create a prompt called the investor update prompt and create a prompt template with the template as you're a Goldman Sachs analyst. Take these facts and use them to write a short paragraph for investors. So we're basically asking it to transform the facts that we extracted from the article in the previous section into a nicely written paragraph. And we're asking it to basically write it how a Goldman Sachs analyst would write. Now, this is what I love about LLMs. Since they're trained on so much data, they know how to sound like a Goldman Sachs analyst since the LLM has probably read thousands of reports like these. In the next cell, we create our investor update chain and pass our LLM and the investor update prompt that we just created in the previous cell. In the next line, we run that chain and pass in the list of facts from our previous section. Then we print the investor update along with its length. So in the output, you see a nice paragraph written along with the length of the paragraph, which is 1105. In the next cell, we perform another transformation. We ask the LLM to take the list of facts and turn them into triples for a knowledge graph. And this is again done with the help of prompt template. And we will access this with the triples prompt variable. In the next cell, we create another LLM chain and pass in the LLM and triples prompt. And in the next line, we run the chain by passing facts to it. And we print the triples created along with the length. So in the output, you see 13 triples created. And at the very end, you see the length, which is 758. Now let's chain these together in the next section. What chaining together means is that previously in this project, we performed two separate steps, extracting the facts from an articles and then passing them again to the LLM to create investor updates. What if we could do both in the same line? And that's what sequential chains provide us. We can execute one chain, take the output of that execution and make it the input for the next chain. And this ability is provided to us by sequential chains. So you notice we import simple sequential chain and sequential chain in the first line. Then we create our full chain by using simple sequential chain and passing in the two chains from previous sections, our fact extraction chain and our investor update chain. And in the next cell, we run our full chain by passing it the article. So what's going to happen to this article now is that the fact extraction chain will first run and extract facts from the article. And then the output from that will be passed to the investor update chain. And finally, 
we will get the paragraph that the LLM will write as a Goldman Sachs analyst. And this is what we see in the output. Perfect. Now the next section demonstrates something called as a PAL chain, which is a very interesting concept. And this is what I was talking about when in the beginning I mentioned about getting more accurate results to maths problems. So we know that the bigger and better an LLM is, the higher the chances of it knowing the right answer to a maths problem. But what if the LLM you're using is not that big and you still want an accurate result? Well, Langchain has a solution to that. It asks the LLM to first convert the maths problem into Python code and then tell us the result. And it turns out LLMs are great at coding and are able to tell the result really quickly. This entire concept is called PAL chain, so let's check it out in practice. From langchain.chains, we import PAL chain, then we set our LLM to GPT 3.5 Turbo, then we set the temperature and max tokens. In the next cell, we create our PAL chain from math prompt and pass the LLM. We have two questions. The first one has a maths question about pets, and the second has a maths question about apples. And in the output, you see that the lang chain entered into a new PAL chain, wrote Python code to solve the maths question and return the result. And we can see the answer to the problem, which is nine and is the right answer. This is a damn good way to get LLMs to get accurate results for maths problems. Then in the next section, we will look at another awesome feature of Langchain, which is API chains. Here using just our LLM and Langchain, we want to be able to call an API to get some weather information. Now you know that if we had to write the code ourselves to call an API, that would take a while, right? Because we would have to figure out the documentation, call the right routes and so on. Now let's see how we can get an LLM to do this with the help of Langchain. We import four things, OpenAI for our model, the API response format, the API chain since we want to call an API, and our prompt template. We set our LLM as OpenAI, and then we import OpenMeteorDocs, and then create a new chain called chain new. And using API chain, we pass it our LLM and the docs we just imported. All we now have to do is run our chain since we have just passed the LLM and the docs. The chain does everything for us. So we pass the prompt in the chain which says what is the temperature right now in Singapore in degrees Celsius. In the output we see that our LLM has figured out the right route and parameters and it got the right answer where you can see the latitude, longitude, wind speed, wind direction, time zone, etc. Now we don't care about all those details so our LLM gives us a human readable answer which is the temperature right now in Singapore is 26.1 degrees Celsius. Now this gives us a new level of abstraction. I mean, APIs themselves were supposed to be an abstraction, but now using an LLM to call an API and give you a human readable answer from the JSON response it received is a whole new level of abstraction, right? Then I give it another question, is it raining in Singapore? In the output, you can see that it again calls the API, gets the answer, and it again gives me a human readable output, which says it is currently 25.8 degrees Celsius in Singapore and gives me the wind speed and wind direction. It says the weather code is three, which indicates that it is currently raining in Singapore. It is able to deduce that as well. Wow, I'm sure you're amazed at this as well. This is the end of our project. And now I want to take a minute for our sponsor, which is you. Yes, you're the sponsor of this video. Now this channel doesn't have any partnerships or sponsorships, at least for now. And this channel only grows if you share this video with your friends and you like and comment on this video because this channel is too niche and too small to be served by Google. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to come hang out with us in the official Discord for this channel where we discuss the latest technologies. The link for that is in my YouTube profile. All right, I'll see you in the next video.